Hi, everybody. Welcome to History 2213, American History First Half the Survey. Spring Term 2019. Um, this is a welcome and introductory video. I'll try to keep it from being too long, but I did want to give you some pointers that I think would be worth your while to pay attention to. Um, make sure that you read all of the material that's posted online, certainly the announcements before we get started full bore for the semester. There's a lot of useful information that you'll find in the announcements, and it would benefit you greatly if you read them, <clears throat> especially if you have questions about when exams are held, uh, what the format is, how to prepare for them. I actually have postings on all of those items, so take advantage of that information, and please check out the announcements so that you have as much information as immediately available. Make sure when you log in the first time, uh, or the second time, that you check out the menu items on the left side of the screen. Most especially, make sure that you can access the modules in which your weekly work will be assigned. Make sure that you can access your textbook, which is under the bookshelf menu item. We have instant access, so you have an online text. You don't have to wait for the bookstore to get it in. If, in fact, you want a, a hard copy, the bookstore is supposed to carry some loose leaf copies uh, for purchase. Please check with them if you're interested in having a hard copy instead of just using the, uh, the electronic book. You'll also find Smarter Proctoring as a menu item on the left. That is where you will sign up for your midterm and final exams. Midterm and final are proctored exams, meaning you have to take them at a proctored location, a testing site that is part of the uh, Community College Consortium in Mississippi. I would suggest that you make your appointments immediately. Check out the time frame in which each of your exams is going to be online and make an appointment right now because the seats fill up and not being able to get one is no excuse for not taking the exam. So even if you're not sure, um, you may have to change the scheduled time at a later date, make an appointment now so you have one. It would be really helpful, uh, both for midterm and final. You can access those any other way. Every week, uh, with the exception of two weeks, you have a chapter to read and a quiz and a discussion assignment to complete. In addition to making sure that those are done completely and on time, I take attendance by way of whether you've submitted your work by the due date. So you have to submit at least one of your assigned pieces, discussion or quiz, for every week of the semester in order to be counted present. If you do not turn in the work on time, you are counted absent, and with two absences, you get a notice saying you can't miss anymore, and with three absences, you'll be dropped from the class. So make sure you get at least one, preferably both of your assignments, all of your assignments in by the due dates that they are uh, requested for. Now we're going to be covering an awful lot of material this semester. It's a nature of survey courses. You, um, you cover lots, but not necessarily very deeply. Uh, as a consequence, you've got a lot of material to absorb. In an attempt to help you uh, get your arms around the material, I have uh, provided study terms for every one of your chapters that give you some focus uh, along with the outlines and the learning objectives that are also available for each of the chapters. Ideally, that gives you a sense of the material that you're covering in any given chapter and what you need to focus on. The study terms are also what you need to use to prepare at least for half of each of your exams. Uh, your midterm and final consist of multiple choice questions that are derived from the chapter quizzes. So you'll have those, nothing new in those if you prepare yourself fully. And the other half of each of those proctored exams consists of identification terms. And all of the identification terms are derived from the study terms for each chapter. So if you prepare material appropriately, you will be well equipped to do very well on the exams. Now, one of the risks that students frequently take is to not really prepare for those study terms, not sit down and write out what they are, who they are, what, it, what, the, what the event is, what the law is, whatever the case might be, and why they're important. 
I provided an example in the announcements to give you some idea of how to approach responding to those study terms. I suggest that you read it carefully. And if you have any questions, please email me and ask for further information. Um, if you want to prepare some examples of study term answers and send them to me for review so I can make sure that you're on the right track, please do so. Just don't wait till the last minute before an exam because that doesn't give me time to give you feedback and then have you prepare materials appropriately. So take advantage of that information um, and don't get behind. Like work on those terms every week so you have a body of information to prepare when you sit down to study for each of your exams. If you wait until the last minute, there is no conceivable way you're going to be able to prepare adequate information to respond to the study terms well. So again, you want to talk about who or what something or someone is, when it occurred, and most especially, and this is the thing that really makes college history different from high school history, is you have to explain to me why those things, persons, laws, events, are significant. Why did they matter? What effect did they have? What impact? What were the long-term consequences of those things? That is what distinguishes uh, a good answer from an okay answer and from how we approach history at the college level as opposed to what you may have experienced earlier in your academic life. So keep those things in mind. Um, every Wednesday night I have a chat room available for questions. If you have any questions you can log on to the chat room for the course and ask a question in real time and I'll answer you. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of success with students doing this. Not too many people have ever logged on and asked questions during the chat hours. Those are my virtual office hours, since obviously I am not located uh, on campus. And uh, I, you should know that those that, that that chat room is not monitored except during office hours. So if you go into the chat room and you write a question on Monday, I'm not going to see it until Wednesday night. So it's not the most efficient way to get a response for any questions you have. Again, read the home page of the course, read the guidance for information, and you should not make that mistake. But take advantage of it if you want to. Now one of the things I'm, I'm going to try and do this semester is provide some audio files prior to assigned work. I haven't gotten the one up yet for first chapter. But every week I'd like to put a little file, a little audio guidance up, to give you an idea of the things that you need to focus on for that particular chapter. Um, there are some things, I've been, I've been teaching a long time and I've been doing the online at Heinz for about 14 years now, and there are certain things that continue to come up as problems that students have grappling with. They, they don't quite get what the um, distinctions are, some of the details that are really critical. They're not hard to understand, but they just tend to overlook them. So I'm hoping that if I give a little bit of a, an audio uh, uh, guidance for each chapter, it will help you to understand and recognize some of those things that are really important, but sometimes are overlooked by students. Um, and so you can also look for those. Every module has lots of information available for you uh, in addition to your textbook. There are um, videos that I have posted to give you um, a different perspective, uh, more information on particular topics that are related to the chapter being studied that week, and I think they can be really beneficial in illustrating some of the points that are being covered in that particular chapter's work. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, I generally, uh, I have a day job, right, so I don't teach uh, in the daytime. I That's why I do the online work. I'm available after, uh, usually after 5.30 or 6 o'clock Pacific time, I'm two hours earlier than you, uh, but I have another job that I work in the daytime. So if you need to reach me during the day, the easiest way to do that, the most likely way of me getting back to you quickly is an email. Um, I oftentimes can't take phone calls in the course of the day because I am busy with my other job. So uh, if you have a question that needs response in the daytime, please uh, please email me. That's probably the best way to do it. And should you call, always make sure to tell me who you are, what course you're in, and why you're calling. And please don't call before 7 o'clock in the morning if you should do so because 7 o'clock is kind of early. Even though I am at my day job at 7 o'clock, uh, before that I'm not going to be able to take a call. 
So anyway, um, I hope you enjoy the course. I frankly think it's really interesting. I think that there's a lot of worthwhile information to be had. Um, I've studied history for a long time, so obviously I kind of enjoy it. And I hope that you do too. Um, I know some people don't like it necessarily, but um, my guess is a whole lot of you have to take it. So I hope that you will make the best of it and make a diligent effort to enjoy it. And if you have questions, concerns, um, please feel free to email and let me know what you're thinking about. Ask questions regarding the, the nature of the work that we're covering. And let me know if there's anything that I can do or answer to help you along the way. Good luck. Um, have a good semester. And let's get started with American history. Thank you.